What's going on everyone? Welcome to the next video on my channel. In this video today, we're going to be talking about the foot and the hand. More specifically, the bones that make up the foot and the hand uh, in the appendicular skeleton. Uh, before we do this, make sure you go watch my last video on orientation terminology, because we're going to be using a lot of those terms to discuss these bones today. So let's start off with the hand. So here I have a picture of the hand. And before I talk about the different regions I've highlighted, let's first orient this picture so we know exactly what we're looking at. The first thing that kind of pops up to me is the thumb. And if we remember, the thumb is lateral in the anatomical position. Therefore, over here has to be medial, where our pinky is. And then we can think of our wrist bones or our carpal bones as proximal, opposed to the tips of our fingers being distal. And then finally, what view are we looking at? This is gonna be a posterior view. And the reason I know this is because I can look at the curvature of the fingers and how they would naturally form a fist. So now let's talk about these different regions going proximal to distal. So this first region I already alluded to, are going to be the carpals or the carpal bones. Distal to the carpals is the metacarpals. Distal to the metacarpals, we will have the phalanges, but we're going to have three sets of phalanges. The first set will be the proximal phalanges, highlighted in the dark blue. Notice how the proximal phalanges are present on all five of my digits. Distal to the proximal phalanges, we will have the middle or intermediate phalanges. Notice how my thumb does not have a middle or intermediate phalange. Distal to my middle phalanges, we will have the distal phalanges, highlighted in the turquoise color. We think of these as our, like the tips of our fingers. And all five of our fingers have a distal or intermediate phalange. Sorry, not distal or intermediate, just distal phalange. Okay. So now let's move on to another view of the hand and let's look more specifically at the bones uh, in the carpal region. So we have another view, so remember we, whenever we get to another picture, we want to think of how we're looking at the picture and orient it for ourselves. So again, we can see the thumb. If we remember the thumb's lateral, therefore over here has to be medial. We see carpal bones, therefore we know proximal, distal, where the tips of our fingers are. And then finally, what view are we looking at? This is going to be an anterior view. And the reason I know this is because, again, I can look at the way the hand curves. But another thing I can see is this bone highlighted in orange. And that bone can only be seen from an anterior view. So now let's get into uh, the different bones in our carpal region. And we're going to be going throughout these bones using a mnemonic. And the mnemonic goes straight line to pinky. Here comes the thumb. And as the mnemonic indicates, we're going to start here, right here. We're going to go towards a straight line to the pinky, and we're going to go over to the thumb. So let's start off with the first bone being the scaphoid highlighted in this purplish color. The scaphoid is actually the most commonly broken bone. A lot of people break this snowboarding when they fall forward right onto their wrists. Right after the scaphoid, comes the lunate, highlighted in this pink. The lunate gets its name from its shape. Its shape kind of looks like a crescent moon. It's a little hard to see in this picture, but if we were to disarticulate these carpal bones, the crescent moon shape would be a lot more evident. After the lunate will come the triquetrum, highlighted in this red color. Notice how much the tri tri triquetrum is actually covered by a bone highlighted in orange. So this bone in orange is called the pisiform, and it sits on the triquetrum. And the pisiform is actually a sesamoid bone that forms as a baby when you're crawling. And I like to remember this bone because if I'm pissed, I'm, so pisiform right here, I'm going to slam my fist on the table and break it, my pisiform because I'm pissed. So let's go through my mnemonic. Uh, the first line of our mnemonic to kind of assess where we are. So remember, straight line to pinky for our scaphoid, lunate, triquetrum, pisiform. So the next bone that comes along, we're going to, we're headed towards the thumb now, is going to be this bone highlighted in yellow. 
and that's going to be the hamate. If you see, you can kind of see a little projection coming off the hamate. I'm circling it right now. Um, that's where the hamate gets its name. Hamate actually means hook. And so there's like a little hook on the hamate. After the hamate comes capitate. So I like to remember capitate because it's at the base of the middle finger. And if you want to decapitate someone, you probably want to flip them off. Therefore, the bone, the carpal bone at the base of the middle finger is the capitate. After the capitate comes the trapezoid. This bone is named off of its shape being a trapezoid. After the trapezoid, we have finally, we have the trapezium. So let's go through our mnemonic one more time, starting from the top. So straight line to pinky, here comes the thumb. So indicating uh, scaphoid, lunate, triquetrum, pisiform, hamate, capitate, trapezoid, trapezium. So that's the hand. Now let's go over the foot. So again, we have another view of our foot. So let's make sure we're oriented here before we start talking about it. Medial, we know this is medial because we can see our big toe. Lateral, opposite of medial. And finally, we have proximal up here where the ankle would be, or the ankle joint would form. Distal, down at the tips of my toes. And then finally, what view are we looking at? We're looking at a plantar view. So if I were to plant my foot on your face, this is exactly what you would see. So let's start proximal and let's head distal talking about these regions. So this green is gonna be the tarsals, followed by the metatarsals, followed by our phalanges again. Again, but we're gonna use some terminology to distinguish them. Proximal, phalanges will be most proximal, right? Followed by our middle or intermediate phalanges. Notice how the big toe does not have a middle or intermediate phalange, just like the thumb didn't. And then finally, we have the distal phalanges. So now let's change our view and let's talk about the tarsal bones. So again, let's get ourselves oriented. Medial, we can see the big toe, therefore lateral, other side. Proximal, up where our tarsal bones are, where the ankle joint would form. Distal, down where the tips of our toes are. Okay, and finally, what view are we looking at? This is going to be a dorsal view because we're looking at the dorsal surface of the foot. So starting with this bone highlighted in that purple color, this is going to be the talus. I like to think talus tall. If you notice, the talus projects above all the other bones because, so I like to think it's the tallest bone. So remember, you see the tallest bone that you can think, oh, that's the talus. And the next bone you can see just under the talus or inferior to the talus is going to be the calcaneus, highlighted in the salmon color. We like to think of the calcaneus as our heel bone and the, uh, Achilles tendon is actually going to be attaching to our calcaneus. Next bone, we have the navicular, highlighted in the red. So navicular actually means little ship. So you can see it kind of looks like a little rowboat. And I like to think talus, from this view, it looks like talus is riding in the ship of navicular, the little ship. So the next three bones we're going to talk about right here, all of the same name, but we're going to use some orientation terminology to distinguish them. So the first one we have is the medial cuneiform, highlighted in the orange. And as it suggests, right, this is going to be the most medial of the three. Next, we have the intermediate cuneiform or middle cuneiform. And after that, we have the lateral cuneiform, that's most lateral. And our last bone of the tarsal region is going to be the one highlighted in the blue color. And that's going to be the cuboid. The cuboid gets its name from its cube-esque nature. A fun fact about this one is actually that pirates uh, would use the cuboid to make dice out of. So they would take people's foot, shave them down, and make dice out of it because it's, the cuboid's already uh, very cube-shaped in general. So that's going to conclude the bones of the hand and the foot. I hope all, you guys watching all enjoyed um, presentation and make sure to, if you have any questions, leave it in the comments below.